Hello everyone! So far, we've seen two tests for determining the convergence or divergence of a series, the divergence test and the integral test. Last time, we studied the integral test, and in many ways, it was a more powerful tool than the divergence test because it enabled us to determine both convergence and divergence. The idea was instead of asking whether a series converges, we would turn the series into an analogous improper integral and ask whether that integral converges or not. The upshot was that evaluating an improper integral is generally easier than finding the sum of a series. But this is also a serious disadvantage of the integral test, because although evaluating an integral is easier than finding the sum of a series, it's not that much easier, and there are certainly many, many integrals that we are completely unable to evaluate, or would be a nightmare to try. But if you remember from when we were talking about improper integrals, we had a trick to get around this, provided we're only interested in determining convergence versus divergence of an improper integral, and we don't care about the precise value of the integral. That trick was the integral comparison test, and there is an analogous test for series. It's called the comparison test, or the direct comparison test. As a reminder, the basic idea behind the integral comparison test was we compare a complicated improper integral to a simpler one whose convergence status we knew in advance. If the simpler integral was convergent and bigger than the complicated integral, we could then conclude the complicated integral was also convergent. And conversely, if the simpler integral was divergent and also smaller than the complicated integral, we could conclude the complicated integral was also divergent. The basic principle at work was, if you are smaller than something finite, you are finite, and if you are bigger than something infinite, you are infinite. But of course, that basic principle is certainly not special to integrals, and we can apply the exact same reasoning to series. Let's say we want to determine the convergence status of some complicated series whose terms, a sub n, are all positive. And let's say we also have a relatively simple series with terms b sub n that are also positive, but whose convergence status we know in advance. If the simple B series is convergent and each term B sub n is bigger than the corresponding term A sub n in the complicated A series, then we must conclude the sum of the A series is smaller than the sum of the B series, which is finite in this case. Thus, the A series converges. And conversely, if the simple B series is divergent and each of its terms B sub n is smaller than the respective A sub n term in the A series, then the sum of the A series must be bigger than the sum of the B series, which is infinite in this case. Hence, the A series must also have an infinite sum, or in other words, be divergent. So that's the direct comparison test. Now, before jumping into the examples, I need to tell you about one other little fact that is useful throughout this section. Recall that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p dx converges if and only if p is strictly greater than 1 and diverges if p is less than or equal to 1. Well, by the integral test, an analogous fact for series also holds. The series sigma sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power p converges if and only if p is strictly greater than 1, and diverges otherwise. We'll be making use of this fact quite often in the examples. <laughs> 